All right, ladies and gentlemen, episode four. Number four. Of our podcast. We just had an amazing, I, I got some of the clips. I'm going to have to put them up. We got an amazing conversation. Thank you, by the way, Ricardo. You're very welcome. And it was a pleasure speaking about that. Yeah. I'll tell you guys, um, if this is your first time listening, tune into every episode. If this is your fourth time listening, I hope you guys are enjoying it because uh, I'm learning so much from you, man. And I know that if everyone took this as seriously as I do, the growth would be just, it wouldn't even be measurable. So understood. I'm, I'm just very humble uh, to share, you know, anything and any experience that life has has uh, taught me. So I'm, I'm excited it. to get this podcast going and yeah. hopefully, you know, create some value today and get some feedback and and, 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 and grow together. Absolutely. So yeah. let's get right into it, man. So uh, first thing I want to go over pandemic lockdown number two, at least for yeah. California. Yeah speak on it. What do you think? What, where do our minds need to be? You spoke about it a little bit on the coronavirus the first Correct. time it came out. So no politics, none of that. Where, where does the mind need to be to, to overcome this and to maybe even grow out of this? Well, just keep focus on, on what you're doing. Uh, don't let the outside noise of everything that is happening. Right. I, you know, I've learned from the first lockdown, you know, to now the second one, where the first one was like, okay, what's going on, right? We were kind of, you know, on, I personally was like, what's going to happen, right? I was more scared, mainly for my family, my kids, my family, my direct inner core family, not, not knowing where we're going. But I think this time around, it's, it's the second time uh, we're going to have to go through it. But I think we just got to keep our minds focused on what we want in life, mm. focus on our jobs, focus in our family, and focus on basically just fulfilling our day-to-day -day life despite of everything that is happening, controlling our thoughts, our emotions, because we have family that depends on us. So we have to make sure that we stay focused on our jobs and our family and just allow the rest to unfold the way it's going to unfold because we cannot control that. I see. So focus on what you can control. That is correct, which is our emotions, yeah. our feelings. Mm -hmm. Obviously, you know, uh, tell our families we love, we care for them, be there for them and continue to focus on what we're doing. Whatever we do on a day to day basis is keep our minds busy mm -hmm. so that we keep focus, you know, despite of all the noise and all the drama that is happening. Yeah, I've always admired that about you. You don't listen to the outside noise and there's so much of it now, especially nowadays. Right. There's just it's so loud. Could you give me maybe a tip for me or even just the audience on how to kind of filter out some of that outside noise? Do you just not engage in the conversations? Do you walk I like away? to stay away from the negativity. Anytime I see negativity, I put something like on my on my eyes and I just mm. try to say, OK, I stay away from that and I focus here. I'm I'm very self-aware on what I need to feed my mind with and yeah. what I don't want to feed it with because I know I could create I could create serious damage into my thought process as well if I steer in the wrong direction. Mm. So I like to be laser focused on just on the environment and on the things that really matter. They want to that I want to stay focused to make sure I keep my mind in the right direction and not let all the other negativity get to my head because that's really where I'm concerned because I could start going in the wrong direction as well. I see. Kind of like what you were saying where if you know good habits and bad habits whereas if you start seeing negativity, you feel like you may start getting stuck in that. That is correct. I start doubting decisions, I start mm -hmm. doubting situations, I start doubting where we're going and 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 I start doubting my judgment towards things. So I already know me. I know my mm -hmm. I know my weak areas and I know my strengths and I know one of the strengths I have I've always been the guy I'm always very laser focused as to where I'm going mm -hmm. not allowing the outside noise to really get to me cuz I don't pay attention to it. Got it. I don't like to pay attention to it cuz like anything else I could easily get sidetracked. You get dragged into yes. it. Yeah, and I see that unfortunately mm -hmm. right where on social media I have friends and they're nonstop talking about the outside noise, you know, and a lot of it's unfortunately negative. Correct. And I'm, I just don't want to engage anymore with them. It's, 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 there's a lot of negative stuff happening, yeah. but if you really think about it, there's a lot of great things happening. Yes. yes. So where do we focus on the negative or do we focus on all the great things that are happening? Cause there's a lot of negative stuff happening, but there's a lot of great things happening. What are those? You find them. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. They're great things for me. Yeah. 
that cannot be for you, but you got to find, again, what are great things for you in all aspects, from business to family to situations that you can actually utilize it mm. so that you can actually grow. Wow. Grow based on the circumstances that we're facing. And I've seen that firsthand. My little brother, I talk about him a lot, but we go on these bike rides together because yeah. we like to escape the outside noise. And one of the, like an uns- a kind of a silent agreement we have is we don't talk about it at all, like the outside noise. We only talk about positive stuff. Sure. And I tell you, like there are times where, like I said, I've been stuck in the outside noise, the negative zones, and then I'll have this bike ride with him. And it's like a day and night difference, right? I'm like, man, why did I even pay attention to the right. negative stuff in the first place? Right. I was feeling terrible until right. you came and we went on this bike ride together. Well, think about it. If you were on that back bike ride all the time yes. and you had that mindset all the time, yeah. how much more productive could you be Mm, just by having and staying in that moment yes maybe not even physically out on that bike ride but staying on that bike ride emotionally through your day and how much more could you create out of your day just staying on that zone as long as possible throughout your day wow huge and i i mean think about it you're never drained from positivity, right? Have you ever heard of anyone tell you, oh, I'm feeling drained from all the positivity? No. Never, no. right? You're drained from the negativity. You're drained from negativity. Yeah. Positivity is you can never have enough of it. It's something that you crave. And when you have it, you want more. And you try to figure out a way to continue to feed it because it's the greatest feeling once you have it and you utilize it and and you feed off of it yes. to continue to want to have it as much as possible so that you can go out and impact the rest of your people around you. Wow. That's like a huge takeaway. So uh, let's move on to the next topic, though. So the next thing I want to go over is you're seeing this. I'm seeing this, especially with the lockdowns again and kind of relating to what we talked about with the outside noise. Some of the realtors or clients or even just professionals I know are struggling. You've gone through this in the past, you said. We went a little bit over in the last podcast. Any tips for them on how they can adjust? What What's something that they can do to get over the struggles? Um, I see a lot of, again, negativity. And I do see a lot of optimism. Mm. You know, there's a lot of people, a lot in our industry that are doing Killing better it. than ever, man. Yeah. They're putting numbers together that are just, um, they're doing amazing things and my hats to them because, uh, it is obviously difficult for others when it's just amazing for others, Mm -hmm. amazing for few, very difficult for a whole lot. Yeah. So what I would like to share on that subject is obviously all the people that are not doing good, man, we have to look up to that people that are doing good. What are they doing? Look at their mindsets Look at the culture and the environment that they're in Mm. and let's get closer to them. Let's not criticize them. Let's actually get close. Let's knock that door. Let's get into that environment. Why? Because there's a lot of people suffering in our marketplace, but there's few that are winning and that are winning at high Mm. level. And I ask those that are winning at high level, let's be leaders. Let's be true leaders and let's encourage those that are not on how can we help them get going because there's plenty of business right now. There's abundance of business, but unfortunately, in my opinion, again, it's all about mindset, right? That one that wakes up and sees negativity, meaning they see, oh, there's nothing going on in our marketplace. It's dead. Mm -hmm. The coronavirus, nobody wants to buy. Nobody wants to sell. Well, guess what's going to happen? Yes, nobody's going to want to buy or nobody want to sell mm-hmm. because that's the way you look at life. Yeah. Right. And there's that one that wakes up and they're saying, man, there's so much opportunity out there. And think about the way they're going to approach their day versus the one that thinks, oh, there's nothing happening or there is. But it's just so tough out there instead of looking at it with a different perspective and say, man, I'm going to go out and, and produce some business today. Yes, it's going to be, you know, I'm going to struggle mm-hmm. because I'm going to be competing with 20 other buyers. But man, I know I'm going to get an offer accepted. Yes. Whether it's today or tomorrow, we're going to be, you know, we're we're going to stick together as a team. I, I, we tell our buyers right now, we tell them, hey guys, we're a team. Yeah. All right, we're on this together. You're going to, we're going to get smacked around here and there. We're going to get, we're going to get offers that are, they're going to, they're going to get 
knocked down and we're going to get rejected maybe one, two, three, five, or ten times. Wow. But guess what? We're a team. We're going to get you one accepted. As long as you don't give up on us, we're not going to give up on you, and we're going to get you a home. And, and again, it's, it's mindset, man. It's, it's mindset of going out and executing your day with the right mindset. Today, something great is going to happen for us. And I think that's so huge because in the last podcast, we talked about you know, building a relationship with the listing agents and so yes. forth and ways to get better you know, at your offers. But then on the client side, you're saying build a strong teamwork relationship with them. Correct. Because they need to, of course, be aware of the market, which is very, very competitive. Educating the customer mm -hmm. to understand since the beginning, setting the foundation and preparing the customer. You know, a lot of times I think that's where we lack is we do not prepare our customers correctly and setting up the standards and setting up exactly what to expect. And a lot of times that's when buyers or even customers get frustrated. Mm. It's because we didn't set the standards correctly to begin with. Wow. Mr. and Mrs. Buyer, let's go sit down. Let's get you to really understand what's happening in the marketplace. You're going to see houses that you're going to love. However, anticipate that there's going to be 10 or 15 offers per home. Let's make sure we're aggressive. Make sure we understand we're going to lose multiple of them. Do not get emotionally attached to a home mm. because we might not get that home. We may get lucky in the first offer we make or we may get lucky in the 10th offer we make. Wow. So just prepare them for the expectations of what the market is and you will have more success on the outcome with that client through the process of the emotions that they're going to go through, you know, while they're shopping and, and, and potentially getting beat out or how quickly you're able to get them uh, accepted on an offer. Yeah. And I say the educating is amazing and putting them for a much smoother ride. Correct. But I also like what you said about how we're not, we're a team. We're not going to give up. You're not going to give up. I'm not going to give up. That's, I mean, that's such an attractive mindset. Like who wouldn't want to work with an agent that tells their client like that. Right. I mean, it's not, all about, hey, I've sold this many homes. I've, you know, it's it, it's more of a personal thing. It's a commitment to each other. Yeah. Hey, we're going to commit to each other on this process. I'm committed to you. I need your commitment back. We're a team. Wow. We're trying to accomplish the same goal here together. Wow. Love it. So I kind of want to piggyback on that because you talked about how some of the offers may not be accepted, a failure. And I, I was thinking of failure. And I was thinking, hey, Ricardo has probably gone through failures. Could you tell me from the top of your head, maybe a couple of a failure that you've gone through, maybe through a buyer's offer, listing agent, or whatever, it can be any failure, but what you really learned from that failure? It's how to do things differently the next time around. Mm. You know, go back and analyze circumstances. You know, now in life, I'm a big guy that I do, I reflect a lot. I, I want those moments of reflection because when you reflect on what went wrong, that's when you start making the adjustments mm. that need to be made so you don't go out and do it again identically the same way. Wow. Do you see what I'm saying? Yeah. Is It's okay. I go back and I analyze the steps that we took, what happened, and how do we make the adjustments so that we're able to make it better the next time around. And I just go out and do it again the same way over and over again because the outcome is going to be the same. Mm. Do you see what I'm saying yeah, is yeah. it's the reflection portion of it. Spend a little bit more time and reflect on it so that you're more productive back the next time around versus just going out and doing it right away again without having that reflection moment mm -hmm. to reflect on it, learn from it, build from it and go out and do it again more productively. Wow. Yeah. Don't just blame it on an outside force. Really take what? Like take ownership. ownership. Yeah. Hey, it, it's very common that we do, right? Yeah. It's we start blaming everybody. Yes. Until we actually figured out is it's what did I do wrong? Right. Mm -hmm. I think when we start taking ownership of our life and I, ownership of situations, uh, that's when you start taking more responsibility and you start having more progress because you take responsibility and ownership of the errors and the problems versus blaming other people. Mm, kind of what we talked about earlier. Or blaming the environment, right? Yes. Because yes. it's easy to say, oh, it's just the market. Mm. It sucks. The coronavirus. It's, it's not yeah. good. You know, I've heard some even some agents telling their buyers, or oh, don't even buy right now. The market is just, it sucks. It, it Again, it's, it's how do we see it? Or, hey... Yes, it's a challenging market, guys. 
I'm excited. You know why? Because it's going to be challenging. Mm. But guess what? When we get that win, it's going to be, be fun. Yeah. And it's going to be very, it's going to be a great feeling yeah. knowing that even through the challenges we navigated and we still came through. It's, it's a great feeling, man. It's, it's, it's a learning and growth process. I tell some of my agents, especially my new ones, um, that this time frame in the marketplace, it's going to make them better and stronger because once we exit this whole situation that is happening, this craziness, they're going to exit out being better than they were when we got into this. Wow. And think about it. Like a great thing that I was thinking when you were speaking right now was everything that's hard, typically at the end of it is a great reward, right? Nothing good comes just easy. That's when the growth happens, man. Yeah. And see, that's the problem as, as human beings. We always want things easy. Mm -hmm. And this is a discussion I always have, not only with my kids at home, but with the people that I have, you know, a, a conversation over growth and things of that nature. It's in the easy is, is, is not when you grow. Yeah. It's when it's hard. That's really when you start the growing. Growth's kicking in. So we got to seek the hard things, the hard moments, the hard situations, because that's when the true growth happens mm -hmm. but a lot of times unfortunately we train our minds the other way around yes. is when it becomes hard that's when we easily give up right because it's hard mm. or either we become stubborn it's hard but i'm gonna figure it out yeah and that's when we start truly truly growing it's wow. through those hard moments. That's why I'm excited. You know, I have a few agents only working for me. I, I have a very small team. Yeah. But I was sharing with my guys. I was like, hey, guys, please understand. You got to be excited because this is a challenging moment that you guys are working with a lot of buyers. Uh, unless you're a listing agent, it's, it's a really good area to be in. But if you're working with a lot of buyers like they are, I say you have to be excited that this moment it's going to set the foundation of who you're going to become over the next few years in this business. And this, these moments are going to make you great agents. Once everything starts stabilizing a little bit better, yeah. you're going to become great at what you do. Mm, yeah. But allow this process to teach you, to evolve you, to make you better. And once we exit and things start coming into more of a normality, you guys are going to become great. And I'm excited for them yeah. because they're learning through it. You know, they're learning through this process. I've been through these through these um, uh, moments in our marketplace multiple times. Mm -hmm. And I've navigated and I grew through them. So I know the process. Yes. And that is what made me a better agent in the process. So that's why I see it. And I'm excited for them because those that stick to it are stubborn through it. And... Um, and they navigate through it and, and they put effort and, 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 and they just work it through. Uh, they're going to exit out just becoming much, much better. stronger. You're going to yes. see, you're going to see that gap, right? Of the ones who, how they're going to separate themselves yes. from the others. The great analogy I was thinking of was during the first shutdown, when all gyms, and everything were closed, um, you're into physical health. I am too. I would start working out. I was working out at the parks. I would take my weights there. Just figuring your way. Yeah, I would figure out anything to do to stay mm -hmm. in shape. And I'll tell you, when the gyms reopened up, I went back to the gym. And everyone's like, whoa, Seth, like you're pretty big still, man. Yeah. And uh, they're like, yeah, we lost all of our muscle mass. Right. And I was thinking in my mind, because like, I didn't slack off. Correct. I figured out a solution around right. it. And now because of that, some of the guys who I was like, man, I wish I could be just as strong as you. Right. I'm ahead of them now. Yeah, they're behind. Yeah. They're behind. That gap. And you are, you're ahead. Why? Because you didn't stop, man. You didn't give up and you didn't find excuses as to why you're not going to do it because mm -hmm. all the equipments are sold out. Yeah. There's nothing out there. I'm just going to stay home. I'm going to chill. I'm going to relax. And then by the time everybody gets back up and running, you know, you're trying to pick a pace. There's some guys ahead and there's some guys way behind. Yeah. Which one are you going to be? Exactly. So I want to use that to change gears. One of the things we talked about off camera, and even in the past, was disconnecting. How do you, you know, feed your soul, not just your business? I know so many of my clients, and you probably know colleagues also, that are just so into work. And then they get home and they're still working. What's the importance of disconnecting? How do you disconnect? And looking back, at actually, would you have done things maybe differently? Because you told me you were in a similar phase at one point where it was just nonstop building. Yeah, yeah. 
well, I, I went through that for many, many years, right? It was just work and work and work and work and work. And I didn't know any different. Yeah. Uh, just, you know, just work building our company, building our business clientele base. And obviously with the vision of, of building a company and a business, but you know, it got to a point where I understood and I realized that it was more than that. You know, the fulfillment for me as a human being, it was more than just building a company, building a, a successful business. And that's when I started realizing I, I, I needed to tap into other areas that would disconnect me where I could enjoy those moments, fulfill the soul and be able to reconnect back into my business and be fresh and ready to go. Mm -hmm. So my disconnection is my mornings and my evenings. You know, I have my personal time, my business time, and then I go back into personal time. So my disconnection is in the morning, my morning preparation, yeah. you know, from the morning that I wake up, you know, from my morning routines with my boys, et cetera going back into business, developing my business hours to take care of business, and then disconnecting back again mm -hmm. in the later part of the day to connect back into my family environment, baseball, activity with the boys. Uh, that's basically my disconnection. That's, you know, I love what I do for work, yeah. and I love what I do outside of work, okay. which is being with my boys, my wife, baseball, baseball activities, development through the sport mm. so it's like i feed myself in business and then i go out and feed my soul and myself on the personal level but it's taking years man to figure it out a schedule and to figure it out how do i break down my day mm. where i'm given priority in the areas that I need to get priority, how many hours here, how many hours there, mm. so that I can try to balance everything out where I'm touching all areas that are important to me. So tell me from, cause you've been in business for what, 15 something plus years. Going now. on 16 years now on right. this line of work. Yes. So tell me, did you feel like you have, is it different balances in different periods of your life where it might be more business at one point, more personal at another point? Of course. Yeah. Or for me at the beginning, it was all about business, mm -hmm. very minimal uh, family time. And, but I think anybody that wants to be successful and wants to build a successful company, you got to go through that. I don't I think see. there's any way around it. Mm -hmm. You know, there might be other ways around it, but it's going to take a longer period of time, a different formula. But in reality, if you, if you search on any successful company, any successful operation, uh, those, those first years, man, them, you're, yeah. you know, family's going to suffer, yeah. you know, family's going to suffer again, depending on where do you want to take it to? Mm. If you just want to run an average business, then you're going to be able to play with that schedule more. Mm. But if you're trying to be ultra successful and run a very successful real estate sales environment, you're going to have to sacrifice a lot of personal time in the beginning because you're building and you're setting up the foundation and then you'll have time along the way to start readjusting your schedule. So those that are beginning or have a couple of years and they're trying to really become very successful at a high level, uh, there's not such thing as a four four week uh, four day a week yeah. you know uh, four day working weeks a week and be, and want to build up a, a big successful uh, operation. It's it's gonna be time. It's gonna be time, and as you're going and growing, you start making adjustments. That's the way it happened for me. As we started growing and establishing the business, we started readjusting our schedule and started giving more priorities to priorities and then adjusting our personal to our business schedule to make sure that we had everything the way we wanted to. Yeah. But because we had already paid the price along the way. Mm, got it. So it's unrealistic, essentially, right, to imagine a three to four day week and expect to see these of, results. Yeah, of course not. Yeah. You, know, you can ask the same question to anybody else. And I'm sure 99% of the people is going to tell you the same thing. Mm -hmm. You know, there might be a couple that had a different experience Yeah, and they had um, a different situation, but 99%, 90% of the people that have built successful businesses will tell you that's, that's what they've been through. And, so and you were married when you first began this. Yes. Could you tell me maybe a little bit about the conversation you had with your significant other, Sandra, in this case, uh -huh. when you first, you know, kind of dove into the idea of, hey, unfortunately, you're not going to see a whole lot yeah. of. Yeah, that's let me tell you, that's the conversations we've had, man. And I think, again, 
setting the expectations, I think, without even realizing it, you know, when I told you earlier about, you know, setting the expectations with our customers, hey, this is what you're going to see potentially and kind of prepping them, prepping ground for it. It gives you the opportunity to have obviously more success along the way. Um, I had that conversation with Sandra mm -hmm. and we had that conversation. I said, hey, you ain't going to see a whole lot of me along wow. this period of time because we're building. Yeah. But there's going to be light at the end of the tunnel. You nice. know, I, I told her 10 years, 10 years, give me about 10 years. And after 10 years, we're going to have something where I'm going to be able to readjust, rearrange. And now we're going to be able to enjoy life better mm -hmm. based on, you know, those 10 years. But I asked her for 10 years. Wow. I told her it's going to be about 10 years. I need you to support me. You know, she's been in the business. She's part of the business. Yeah. She's in the company and everything. But obviously she's been a mom. Of course. Right. Taking care of kids, taking yes. care of responsibilities. Uh, so she's always backed me up. But but, you know, that was we set up, I set up the expectations and, and she was willing to roll with it in the beginning and she supported me all the way along. So that created that foundation where, you know, I'm just very blessed that it, it, it unfolded the way I was anticipating mm. until I got to a point where I was able to now readjust my schedule and start giving more priorities on personal level and things that were very important to me that were no longer non-negotiable. Mm -hmm. Meaning I wasn't willing to, now to negotiate business time over personal time on certain time frames on my day because they became non-negotiable anymore wow. because I had already gone through the process yes. where I was able to now make them a non-negotiable item within my day. Wow. Interesting. Yeah. I, it's funny that you say that because we, like, we talked about it earlier, setting expectations. Yes. And sounds like in all aspects of your life. And we talked about off camera, kind of sort of setting expectations about yourself through the yes. subconscious mind. Yes. Where could you dive into that? I think I want to get more of that because I thought it was amazing where you were talking about seeing yourself somewhere and writing it down because then the, basically the expectation is now there and now you're just. Just the reaffirmations, right? I'm, I'm, I'm huge on, on, on affirmations. And even in the beginning is just basically teaching the subconscious mind over the conscious mind and just basically knowing what you want and what you're going to create and already seeing yourself being there. Mm. It's understanding you're already there. You just got to go through the process, you know, setting the expectations on what you want out of life, writing it down, mm. reaffirming it to the world and to yourself so that you're able to now just go through the process so that you can accomplish and reaffirm what you wanted to create out of what you're trying to create in life. So just so the audience understands, because we weren't, we talked about it for a long period of time. Yeah, we went very deep into, very it. Deep into <laughs> yeah. it. Yeah. So just as a quick tip is you get a piece of paper. So could you walk me through what you're doing right now? So I'm reading this book right now, which I'll recommend to everybody. It's called The Power of the Subconscious Mind. It's a, it's a powerful, powerful book. I read a lot of books throughout the years. This is probably one of the tops, if not the top, one of my top books. Wow. Uh, which... You know, I know about this already, but it's just the bringing awareness on a daily basis. You know, we we attract what we think of. Mm -hmm. Basically, that's that's what it comes down to. If you and even if you tap into earlier what I've discussed about how do I wake up and how do I prepare my mindset to say today I'm going to go out and win. I'm already attracting a win into my day. I'm already attracting a positive environment into myself. Why? Because I'm I'm claiming something positive for my life versus claiming negativity mm -hmm. and finding excuses and as to reasons as why it cannot happen because mm -hmm. of the environment or am I claiming success mm -hmm. based on what I think of? It's what we're going to attract right back into our life. If you ever think about people that are really negative or are very nervous and they're very scared all the time, that's exactly what they attract back yes. is what they what they're scared of mm -hmm. is because we are created by just basically energy. It's either we attract good energy back or we attract negative energy into our life based on the way we think and based on the way we can conduct ourselves. So how can I keep my mind as positive as possible throughout the day, not just for a short period of time, but as long as possible throughout my day so that I can attract 
that back into my life, claiming through writing my reaffirmations of not what I want, but what I know I'm going to accomplish in life, claiming it already, not saying, oh, this is my goal. I want to get here is you're claiming it. You're already there. Mm. So it's a difference. Yeah. Is you want to get there or you claim you're already there. I just got to go and do the process, but I'm already there. The, it's going to happen. I'm already there. I just got to go now through the process and it's going to happen by reaffirming it, by believing it's going to happen. And the universe is going to reward you, man. As More long powerful. as, yeah. as long as you believe it, as long as you can, you can feed your subconscious mind and you lie to your mm -hmm. subconscious mind. Cause that's, that's what it, you know, that's what it's, that's what it's about is tricking your subconscious mind mm -hmm. to believe it until it becomes an actual reality. And I know that's another subject of, of conversation, another podcast. I yeah. think we should touch on that, which is huge. Yeah. Uh, but, um, but yeah, it's just your reaffirmations, man, on a daily basis. Well, I want to apply that to what we talked about earlier today on this podcast was how realtors are, you know, some will say, oh, well, it's a bad market. I don't want to do any work. And you attract that. You're going to attract negativity. Correct. In the same sense, I promise you, if any one of our audience is a realtor or mortgage or whatever, professional service, you wake up and you write, I'm going to get 10 offers accepted this month. I'm going to, you know, not I'm going, because you know, I did, right? Sorry, because mm -hmm. you're tricking it. So. I had 10 offers accepted in the month yes. of July. I listed five homes in the month of July. You're going to probably get that. That is correct because you have that mindset and you, it's a repetition process, right? Is you're feeding your mind to believe that until it starts actually happening, happening. for you. Mm. And I think that's the biggest takeaway here. It's calibrate the mindset so that you are going to get out of whatever struggle you're in and reach heck a better place reach out into the world man in the universe and demand what you want and the universe will give it back to you believing man. that you can accomplish it mm, love it well hey holy schmoly right <laughs> awesome. it's good stuff uh, yeah, it's man. it's i think it's a great subject uh, yeah. i love sharing stuff like that because i i, I applied into my life it's been a big a big thing in my life. And, and I, obviously I've been learning as I'm going, I read more on it as I'm going. I just want to continue to feed that muscle because, um, it is hard to maintain it. It is hard. It's, it's like anything else, right? Yeah. It's, it's a little plant that you got to keep pouring that water is that yeah. muscle that you got to keep working in. It, it doesn't just come and it stays or it's not something you're born with. It's yeah. something that you seek for it. Mm. You want to learn it. You want to understand it. And then once you find it, you keep learning on it. Wow. You keep feeding on it because you want to grow on that area. Mm. And it's something that I found. Um, I, I knew about it through my experience and my process of, of building myself as a human being, as a business person. But as I continue to read and, and dive more into it, I found it more. Now I'm digging deeper into it more because I want to learn more about it. Wow. I want to, I want to dominate it. I want to really understand it and grasp it and, and I can utilize it in all areas of life on everything, mm -hmm. on everything that I do from leadership to being a husband, you know, to being just a human to society, to being a leader in my company, uh, to being a leader at home with yeah. my boys and my kids and, and just being a leader in society and, and just just learn and share the experiences. Wow. Well, I think that's good to wrap it up on the episode four. Uh, anything you want to leave to the audience? Uh, just let's go out there, guys. Let's stay positive. Mm. Let's empower our loved ones. Let's empower our people. Right now, obviously, through these times, it is our responsibility to empower our family, empower the people that are around that are around us, our coworkers our friends, our family, you know, it's our responsibility to lead and empower the people around us so that we can come out of this strong and in, and in good standings. Wow. Awesome. Well, Hey, I hope you guys enjoyed episode four. If there's any feedback message, comment Ricardo directly. I'm sure I mean, you, you like to write back to almost everyone yes. now. So we appreciate any feedback. 
And we'll also leave a link at the bottom of this to the book you're talking about, which is The Power of the Subconscious Mind. A great book. I recommend it for yes, sure. Definitely. I'm picking up mine for self or for me, I'll be picking up one for myself as well. So I hopefully you guys do. And we're all set. Thanks, guys, for t- tuning Thank in. Guys. Appreciate it. Bye-bye.